Okay, this this is just uh, just to change things up a little bit from our current series. Just gonna throw this video out there on Blender 3D, and it's going to be um, using I'm using Blender 2.75 at the time of recording this, and um, I assume that you already know the basics of Blender. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The the concept is I was watching a YouTube video the other day. This one here from Brit Lab, and uh, they have this backdrop behind the gentleman uh, with uh, animated little icons moving around in a grid. So I was like, can I make something like that in Blender relatively easy? Let's go ahead and give it a try because the answer is yes. First thing we're going to need is to create these little um, uh, icons in the background, these little images. I think the easiest way to do that is uh, with a font. So I just googled scientific font icons and the first one that came up is one that is totally free and you can see what the little images are. So I downloaded that and saved that font to my computer. So we will use that momentarily. So let's go into Blender. This is my project right here that I've already created. I can hit F12. You can see the final product as far as a still, but we're going to make a video. I'm going to create a new file. Delete the cube. Go into the top view here with 7 on my keypad. And I'm going to um, spacebar, type in plane, add plane, scale with S, 10, enter, and then I'll hit Z to go into wireframe mode, tab to go into edit mode with that plane selected, and I'll hit W to subdivide, and I'm going to put the number of cuts up to, I think the max I'll allow you is 10, and then I'll hit W again and subdivide a second time, and that looks like a pretty good grid right there tab to get out of edit mode and I'm going to control alt zero on the number pad to move my camera up here so we can see and uh, I'll go back into tab mode with the plane there so you can see the grid looks pretty good lined up with the camera right now so what I want to do is I want to with the plane selected go to the modifiers tab and I'm going to add a modifier that is um, wireframe mesh or wireframe right there there we go and I'm going to turn the thickness down to 0 0.002. If I hit F12 now to render it out, you can see what it looks like. Okay, so we got a good grid. Now let's work on the coloring for everything that we have so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my world settings here, and I'm going to choose the horizon color. And this will change our background color and choose hex here. And the values I'm using are 26 a 3 D0, hit enter, that gives us a bluish color. Then with our grid selected, I'll go up to the materials tab and I'll hit new material and I'm gonna hit here under diffused. And again, I'm gonna click hex and the value I'm gonna give for the grid is 1E97C5. I don't have that memorized, I do have it written down. I'll hit enter and we'll hit F12. And there we go, we have that. Uh, and just to keep a consistent look on the grid, I'm going to choose here Shadeless. I'll hit F12 again, and you can see it has now lightened up because we don't have the shadows casting on it. Great, so we have our grid, we have our background. We're almost there. We just need to add in our little icons and animate them. So uh, make sure that I'm not in edit mode for the plane. I'm going to hit spacebar and type in text and choose Add Text. And then with the text selected, I'm going to go to the Fonts tab here, and under Font Regular, I'm going to go here, and I am going to choose a file, and it's the TrueType font, the TTF file that I downloaded from the website earlier from my Google search. And there you go, you can see that we have some icons here. I'm going to hit, with my cursor over the 3D view, three on my number pad, and I'm going to select our grid here, and I'm going to say G, Z, and move it up just slightly so it's in front of our icons. I'm going to hit zero on my number pad to go back to my camera view here. And so there we have some of our icons. I'm going to hit F12 here. You can see what they look like. And you can see that uh, we don't have the material on them. There's casting some shadows. You can see shadows from the grid, like that dark line right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose materials, new material. And again, I'm going to choose color under diffused, hex. And I'm going to give this a value of 45 b 0 D6 and hit enter and I'm going to make that shadeless as well. There we go. We have our little icons colored properly. Now with that selected, I'm going to hit tab, backspace, and then until I have just one icon, I'm going to scale that up a little bit 
and I'm gonna move it someplace like right there. Then I'm gonna shift D to clone it, move it where I want it, hit tab, backspace, and then choose a letter on the keyboard. Oh, there's, you know, uh, it's Q for this uh, font. Shift D, move it over here, tab, backslash, I'll try W, no. Okay, a little skull with E there. Add a tab, uh, tab to add of edit mode, and just shift D. So we're just gonna keep on doing this, choosing different keys on the keyboard each time uh, to get different icons that we may want. Uh, there we go. Shift D, put one right here. There we go. And just until you get it how you like it. There we go. Okay. So we have a still now. Let's do an animation now. Now, if I was to set keyframes for one of these, because it's a font, the uh, center here is a little off center. I can hit R to rotate, and it's going to rotate like that, which isn't horrible. I'd much rather rotate our items uh, centered. So what I'm going to do is, with this one selected, I'm going to hit Alt-C, and I'm going to convert it to a mesh. So mesh from the curve. So now it's a mesh, and now I can say uh, Control-Shift-Alt-C. So all three of those modifiers, and C. And we're going to move the origin to the geometry, so that centers it up. So now when I rotate it, it's rotated like that. So now I can start animating each one of these. Now in reality, I could have animated these all kind of the same and clone them afterwards, uh, but I decided just to do it this way. Uh, so I'm at my first frame here. You can make sure you get the first frame by hitting shift and left arrow. I'm gonna hit I, rotation, shift right arrow, I, rotation. And this will make sure that our animation starts and ends with the same key frames. That way you can loop the video over and over again without any jerkiness to our icons. And then at this point, I can just choose somewhere and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on our little recorder here, so the little red icon right here, and that will record any movements we make. So I'm going to say R, and I'm going to go a little bit further, R, and a little bit further, and rotate it back like that. So now I'm going to go on to the next icon and do the same thing. Choose it, uh, Alt-C, Enter, Control-Alt-C, Enter, and then I'm going to shift left arrow, I, enter, shift right arrow, I, enter, and then I'm going to go somewhere randomly in our keyframes key here on our timeline and rotate and rotate and go on to the next one, control C, enter, control Alt C, enter, shift uh, left I, enter, shift right I, enter, uh, somewhere in the middle here, rotate this. Somewhere right here, rotate this. And if we start, if I hit Alt A now, you can start seeing the animation we have of these icons moving around. So I'm going to do this a few more times. I'm going to stop the recording so you're not bored, but it's basically the same thing for all the other icons. So there we go. I have set keyframes for all of these. I can hit um, Alt A now, and you can see them all moving. All somewhat randomly because I did them all separately. Again, I can hit F12, this is what our rendered scene looks like. And now I can go to our uh, render tab here and I can choose where I want to save this. I'll call it SciBack.avi. I like to use Xvid, um, but whatever encoder you like, any codec, whichever codec you like. And uh, I'm going to put the resolution all the way up to 100 for 1080p here. And then we'll hit F12 here, you can back up. And you can see that uh, this took no, at no time at all really to render for one frame. So we'll hit animate. And it's going to animate those about one second a frame. So 250 seconds estimated time, maybe a little bit longer. So not too long. I will have a animated video I can loop. And I will show that to you. And then I can use that for backdrops, either for title screens or if I had, want to use my blue screen or green screen to uh, chroma key myself in, I could use that as a backdrop. So yeah, uh, sometimes I just like to see things, uh, take things I see out there in videos and see if it's something I could do simply in Blender. This took me maybe five minutes and most of it was just animating those keys, which really there's probably a quicker way to do that. Uh, you probably could have coded it out somehow. Uh, but I hope that you enjoy this video. Very simple, very quick, just a, a little 
concept, little tutorial I thought I'd do. Maybe learn some uh, new things about modifiers or textures or something from watching me do this. And um, I'll play this uh, little loop here for you. Thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. You can search through all my videos there. Think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com forward slash x 1000 There should be a link to that in the video as well. I thank you all for watching. If you did like this, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. As always, I hope that you have a great day.